Hello, everyone. Wendy Ross for U.S. Trotting. Joining me now via Zoom is Mark McCalvey. Mark, all the way up there in Woodbine. How are you doing, Mark? I know you're getting ready for an action-packed weekend uh, this weekend, that's for sure. Yeah, always good to chat, Wendy. Uh, we're doing all right. I think uh, the stress level is pretty high is when you're trying to build up up to a big event like we have coming up on Saturday night, but uh, the great racing that we know is going to happen on Saturday uh, makes all that stress uh, certainly worth it. So excited about what's coming up this weekend. The 40th North America Cup. Now, here's the thing. Going in, the North America Cup is always such a great race to highlight the that glamour division of the three-year-old pacing Colts, that's for sure. But this year, going into last week, you had four eliminations. It was the talk of the town, I think, knowing we had that many great three-year-old Colts. A few of these Colts were in our top contenders. So to see them come back, no surprise uh, that they've made it this far and that they were uh, that great in their eliminations last week. Yeah, you're right. And, and the thing is, you look at the consolation race we have Saturday night and you can make a case for almost that entire field uh two weeks ago you would have thought they probably would have qualified for the final uh we were overwhelmed with the number of entries uh really exciting it was the highest number of entrants since 2009 so to get 33 um Colts and Geldings to enter and then to have four eliminations it made for fantastic racing uh you're right it was a bit of a throwback I don't think we've seen that in the industry in quite some time four eliminations and I was hotly contested and I think at the end of the day, Wendy, it's incredible that coming out of the four eliminations, there's not one elimination that you look back on or at least one of the winners and say, oh, that was uh, that was kind of one of the weaker divisions. I mean, they all went sub 149. Uh, everybody certainly made a statement. You know, and then getting into these eliminations, let's just start with Fulton in the final here. One of the Toscano duo, deadly duo, I say, going into that final, of course, Fulton. Uh, Dexter Dunn does take Fulton over the three Christchurch, as we just found that out, you know, right down the road in his elimination. And, you know, changes were made by Toscano, as they mentioned, and I think it showed there and he, he was just super. Yeah, he was. And, you know, I, I think for, for our first viewing up here at Woodbine Mohawk Park in the Sun Beach somewhere when uh, he got defeated by, um, you know, he got knocked down there in that, that division, I thought, oh, maybe he's not exactly what we thought he might be. But I mean, to bounce back the way he did and, um, you know, Brad McNinch said it at the draw on Tuesday. I mean, that's why Linda's in the Hall of Fame. You know, she made some slight adjustments. And and he came back looking dominant. Speaks volumes of the fact that Dexter uh, selected this one. And you know he probably isn't going to tell you right now, but I kind of get the vibe from the way things came out Saturday night that this wasn't necessarily maybe the toughest decisions for him. I think he's just really impressed by this three year old and to see what he did in his uh, division on Saturday night in that elimination. Uh, I thought it was a pretty big statement. And of course, Dexter showed on Saturday that it is the Dexter Dunn's world. We're all just living in it. And he he is something, that's for sure. Moving on to the other Toscano entered in here. It's my show, of course, gets posed to you here. Scotty Zeron with the the lines for Toscano, undefeated after that elimination last week, you know, and, and completes that one-two punch for Toscano. Starts from post two, you know, and, and you know, I would call you guys caught up with Zeron after the race. What did he have to say? And I, I think he was quoted saying he just drives like a robot, does absolutely anything you ask. That's it. He just said that he can do whatever he wants. And that's obviously going to play into his favor come Saturday night. I don't imagine we're going to see him going coast to coast this time in the final. There's going to be a lot of action, but the fact that he is so versatile and just the way he's come back this year, I know they gelded him uh, and he's just matured as well. And now after going winless at two, five for five at three, and just looking like a monster, a lot of, uh, you know, he's got Regally bred, right? And you know, he's out of put on a show. We know the world champion that she was. I mean, this speed is certainly starting to be flaunted by It's My Show 148. Uh, and looked like he didn't even break a sweat. I, I'm excited to see what the future has in store. I guess we're going to say that a lot uh, when we talk about this field, but there's so many uh, promising uh, three year olds in this group. You know, moving on, Confederate, uh, new into the Pelling Barn, of course, for 2023, caught up with Brett back in April, and he just loved this cold. He loved getting the call uh, to take him, and he said you simply couldn't turn a cold like him down. And, and we're seeing this, you know, that new lifetime mark last week. I think this cold just keeps getting better and better. Of course, T-Trick, no stranger to that North America mm -hmm. Cup winner circle. These two teaming up here post five, probably the one to be. Yeah, I think so, too. That's probably where I'm going to lean here. I think the way that he's performed – uh, nearly flawless, seven for nine. The way that he got his job done in the elimination, never even had to pull the plugs as well. I think there's a little bit of redemption on the line. I think I think Tim was probably disappointed with the way things went in the Breeders' Crown right here at Woodbine Mohawk Park. So I think uh, he's got a little chip on his shoulder to kind of turn the tables and flip the script come Saturday night. And 
how can you knock him, right? He's almost been perfect. And just the way he does it, he he looks like a real monster out there. And I thought he probably caught maybe the weakest of the four divisions, if you can even say that. But the fact that, uh, you know, he put them to bed so easily and scooted home the way he did, I, I think he's I think he will be the favorite when they finally uh, send the wings flying on Saturday night. And and Timmy says that if you just, if you get to see him up close, he is just a little guy, but he loves to do his work. Mm. And don't forget the plugs were still in in that winter circle on Saturday. Next, moving on to Christchurch here, leaves from post three, one of the tactor two in here. Now he's just a big, strong court, of course, out of that great mare darling on the beach. And he's another one. Is he really showed us what he has to offer yet? Tactor says she brought him along slowly last year. I think we're going to see a lot more out of this colt of course, took advantage of of the break there from Bukafalas, the the the, co- the favorite in that race last week. I think he's got some to show from post three here. Of course, Todd McCarthy picks up the drive for Nancy as Dexter goes with the four. Yeah, that's a real nice uh, pickup for Todd, who's trying to repeat as the cup champion. But for Christchurch, I think probably flew under the radar for most, just the fact, like you mentioned, Nancy took her time with him last year. I don't think he made a stakes debut until the Breeders' Crown. And I think that maybe going to pay off in the long run you take your time sometimes you get rewarded for that patience and the way he showed up in his elimination i know there's a lot of people who would think that if vuka Fallis didn't make that break in the first turn he probably crushes them in that elimination he's getting a lot of hype going into the final but you can't sleep on a horse that goes out and puts up a sub 149 elimination win the way that christchurch did and the way that he still fought right down to the wire and to your point nancy's a perfect two for two in this race so uh she's trying to keep that perfect record intact let's move into the final here now this is one of those races i feel like it's if you could pick a su- a couple supers, uh, I-, I know I could go a couple different ways. And uh, for me, it was five, six, two, four going with the five. You said it's probably going to be the race favorite confederate underneath with Vuka Fallas, Of course, the two, it's my show and the four Fulton here is putting both the Toscanos in my super to round out with the four, but no one you can really leave out. If you're looking for a bombs away in here, nothing to say that you can't use a, a couple others in here. Mark, who do you like? Yeah, I think I'm going with Confederate when it's all said and done, just because I've been so impressed for so long by him and the way that he was able to get it done in the elimination. Like I said, I think he looked like he didn't even break a sweat. That being said, it's just going to be so much action. Uh, It's my show is the one that I was also leaning towards. Probably going to put that one just underneath Confederate. Scott Zeron has has a great mind for these big money races. It's almost like he can kind of predict how they're going to play out. And we know that sometimes these races don't go the way that you expect. You have to be able to adapt. And you look at his history uh, in those big events, whether that be the Hamiltonian or the North America Cup, I think that leans uh, a good case for why you would go with It's My Show. Luca Faust still remains a bit of a question mark for me. Jordan Stratton is a tremendous driver. He's making his cup debut. And uh, I don't, and I've heard some people maybe say that, uh, you know, maybe they'd want someone with a little more experience in this race. Jordan Stratton's an unbelievable driver and he's got an unbelievable horse right here. I expect they're going to make their presence known. I just think it's going to be quite a shootout to the point that is it, is this going to be the race where somebody picks up the pieces? I really think our speed records are in jeopardy here. Uh, did they get to three quarters in sub 120? You wouldn't be shocked the way that the track was playing on Saturday night. Dexter Dunn told me, you know, so many races got down to three quarters in 21 and he said, didn't even feel like they were going anything. So uh, it's going to be a, a wild race on Saturday night. And arguably, I think the deepest cup we've ever seen. Let's look at the 8, 9, and 10 here. Redwood, Hanover, Save America, and Ammo. All three, I thought, put up very valiant efforts in, in their eliminations. Save America, of course, the other one, the part of the Tactor duo. Going in here, Save America had a ton of success last year. Not, you know, of course, post nine's a little bit of a hurdle to overcome, but nothing to say he can't. And let's not forget Ammo from post 10, but of course, he overcame post nine last year to win the Breeders' Crown at 52 to 1 for Joe Holloway. But for me, five, six, two, and four. Of course, you have so much else going on in the other card let's highlight it by the fan Hanover. what a group of three-year-old pace and fillies we have on hand of course led by twin b joe fresh breeders crown champion and uh two-year-old philly pacer of the year sylvia Hanover comes back and what about the bongiorno duo beach cowgirl and zenyatta who overcome those bad posts to still make it into the final what a race the fan Hanover looks to be yeah it is and i, I like that you mentioned the, the bongiorno duo in there because i think obviously all the headlines are going to go to twin b joe fresh and sylvia Hanover. i'm personally so excited to see them and finally go head to head. We know uh, the schedule Twimby Joe Fresh had last year was mostly restricted to the sire stakes. And now this year at three, we get to see her in those grand circuit contests. Sylvia Hanover though, I just think she's something special. And uh, maybe it's a little bit of that hometown bias for me, but just watching the way she gets it done. She's the most impressive 
unspectacular horse if that makes any sense i mean a lot of the times out there it looks like she doesn't want to go and then when it's time to go she does uh and i think for driver bob mcclure it's probably put a few gray hairs on his head the way that he has to chase her at times and then at times he can't hold her so but the way she raced in her elimination i thought was superb and i think she's probably coming a little more manageable for them out there that being said, Twin B. Joe Fresh, uh, there's no knock against her. 49 in her limb. It's going to be a fantastic race. This is why the cup card's always so uh, looked forward to every year and anticipated because there's just so many good races. It's essentially like a mini Breeders' Crown Night. And, of course, we have the Armbro Flight for the Open Trotting Mares, the Good Times for the three-year-old Trotting Colts, and the Roses are Red for the Open Pacing Mares. So much action to look forward to. Now, and I know I've been following you guys on Twitter, all on your social media, you have a lot going on. I think we got – what else do we got? We got food trucks, we got bands, we got all yeah. kinds of things. Yeah, all kinds of things is right, Wendy. Uh, doors are going to open at 4 p.m. First race is 6 30 but prior to the races, there's a concert going on. There are, as mentioned, all kinds of food and – drink options with the food trucks, the barbecues. we got a couple specialty cocktails, giveaways. I mean, there's a, a cowboy hat giveaway. Uh, everybody that comes through the door, we charge $10 admission, but you get a $10 betting card. So essentially it's like checking into the game. Uh, under 18, of course, though, is free. And it's going to be a fun night. I think we continue to uh, come out of the pandemic and we see our numbers continuing to rise. You know, you know, it feels like so long ago, but last year was the first time for the cup we were finally able to get back to full capacity. We had a good crowd. I think it's going to be even better this Saturday night. Hopefully Mother Nature's on our side and it'll be a, a tremendous card of racing. You know, we could go through these races for hours, team them up. Uh, we'll just have to wait and see what happens on Saturday night, but I think it won't disappoint. Well, Mark, best of luck to you and the entire crew up there. You guys put on quite a show and it's always something to watch and we all will be watching and best of luck to you and good luck to everyone with a great card of racing.